Hi my dear friends, welcome to HSC Expert YouTube channel. Today our topic is Confined Space Entry Technical Interview Questions and Answers. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe and press bell icon so that you will get notification when we upload HSC Radio videos. Thank you, let us start the video now. Friends, in this video I am going to explain some important interview questions and answers related to Confined Space Entry. Friends, here you can see what is confined space and examples of confined space. Any enclosure having a limited means of entry and exit and it is not designed for continuous occupancy. There will be a presence of hazardous substances such as flammable and toxic gases, oxygen deficiency and enrichment, hot or humid atmosphere or any combination of it. Friends, you can see here some examples for confined spaces, storage tanks, process vessels, pipelines, pits, sievers, tunnels, silos, watts, reactor vessels, boilers, underground utilities vaults, compartments of ships, unventilated corners of a room, ventilation and exhaust ducts, furnaces and any excavation with depth more than 1.2 meter considered as a confined space. Second question is what are the confined space hazards? Friends, in confined space, there are some common hazards like oxygen deficiency. Friends, oxygen can be lacking due to displacement of air by another gas, virus biological process or chemical reactions, absorption of air onto steel surfaces, especially where these are dumped. Friends, due to these reasons, oxygen deficiency can be happen in the confined space. Second common hazard is enrichment of oxygen. Friends, Excess of oxygen in the presence of combustible materials results in increased risk of fire and explosion. Some materials which do not burn in air may be burned violently or even spontaneously in an enriched oxygen atmosphere. Third common hazard is presence of flammable or explosive atmosphere. Friends, here a flammable atmosphere presents a risk of fire or explosion. Such an atmosphere can arise from the presence in the confined space of a flammable liquids or gases or of a suspension of combustible dust in air. If a flammable atmosphere inside a confined space ignite, an explosion may occur. Excessive heat and humidity, presence of toxic gases, corrosive or hazardous materials like H2S, CO, NH3, etc. Poor elimination, ventilation and communication, limited entry and exit, restricted access inside confined space, a restricted movement inside, falling and tripping hazards, Presence of reactive or self-ignite materials, hazard due to electricity or moving machinery, hazard due to pressurized fluid, hazard due to nature of work carried out inside confined space, improper housekeeping, loan working. These all are main hazards in confined space. Third question is, what is the procedure or precautions for entering a confined space? Friends, before entering into a confined space, there are some precautions must be followed. Permit must be procured from operation department, making sure of the following. Complete isolation of the space to be entered. Draining, depreservation and purging or cleaning should be performed. Gas test should be conducted to ensure no hazardous atmosphere is present. Space ventilation. A pre-task meeting must be conducted with all authorized entrants period to entering into a confined space. The attendant standby man shall be assigned at the entrance to maintain communication with employees working inside ensure their safety. A logbook shall be maintained at the entrance to keep track of the people inside the space. Safety attendant must be trained and authorized to use gas testing equipment. Entrant must be wear body harness and if necessary a lifeline be attached to the harness to avoid entry rescue. Lighting should be provided if necessary maximum 24 volts. Lighting should be used attached to a GFCA. Only intrinsically safe or explosive proof equipment shall be used inside. Depending on the situation, emergency rescue team may be put on standby. If an emergency occurs within the confined space, the standby person must not enter in until rescue team arrived. Barricade the area with warning signboards. Friends, all these precautions must be followed before entering into a confined space. Fourth question is, what are the key elements of a safe system of work for a confined space? The key elements to be considered when a drawing up a safe system of work are competency, training, supervision and suitability. 
permit to work procedure, gas purging and ventilation, dangerous residues, testing and monitoring of the atmosphere, mechanical, electrical and process isolation, respiratory protective equipments, other personal protective equipments, safe use of work equipment, communications, axes and egress, flammable or explosive atmospheres, combustible materials. What are the legal requirements in regards to confined space entry? The safety, health and welfare work regulation 21 cover all work in relation to confined spaces. Regulation 5 states that a person shall not carry out work in confined space if it is reasonably practicable that it could be avoided. If the work must be carried out, the hazard identification and risk assessment must be carried out period to the work commencing. A person shall not enter a confined space unless there is a system of work in place that has been planned, organized or performed and maintained so as to render that work safe and without risk to health. Anyone entering a confined space must be provided with appropriate information, training and instruction appropriate to the particular characteristic of the proposed work activities. What are the legal requirements in relation to emergency arrangements for confined spaces? Regulation 6 of the Confined Spaces Regulations 21 state that a person shall not enter a confined space unless there is a suitable emergency arrangements have been made which are appropriate to the confined space. The emergency arrangement shall include all practical measures necessary to ensure the health and safety of the taking part in the rescue, the provision of a suitable and reliable means of raising the alarm in the event of an emergency. Having all necessary rescue equipment nearby and in a well maintained good condition. The provision of information, instruction and training to all involved in rescue procedures. The provision of equipment and training for resuscitation procedures if there is a feasible risk that they will be needed. What must I look for a confined space risk assessment? When carrying out a risk assessment, it is important to ensure that all risks associated with the hazards evaluated and controlled. When carrying out a risk assessment, the following questions should be asked. What could be inside the space that would pose a risk? Contents, oxygen deficiency, previous contents, oxygen enrichment, residues, structure and layout, contamination. What will be created due to the work carry out in the space? Source of ignition, flammable substances. What outside the space that might pose a risk during the proposed work? Inadequate isolation, inadvertent operation of plant, nearby work activities. In what circumstances a confined space work permit can be issued? If confined space properly ventilated, Gas test readings are satisfactory, properly barricaded and warning signs are posted, trained competent standby man is present with lock sheet, sufficient lighting and low voltage electricity, proper means of communication, lag out and tag out if necessary, lifeline and man revitual system if necessary etc. Who is a confined space attendant? He is the one who third party certified and trained and aware of the confined space hazards and how to react if anything goes wrong inside the confined space, able to maintain confined space entry lock sheet and to maintain record of the emergency numbers with him. What are the duties of a confined space attendant? He is responsible for safety of entrants, should be present whenever people are working inside confined space, maintain update entry lock sheet maintain continuous communication with entrants and monitor conditions in the confined space to ensure a safe working atmosphere, prevent unauthorized entry of a personnel, initiate alarm for help if needed, evacuate the entrants if conditions are not satisfactory or in case of any general evacuation is initiated, contact rescue personnel if